Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Now, I always wanted to say that, but it actually doesn't have that much to do with this What Ted Says Today. But we are talking about cheating. What kind of cheating? No, not that kind of cheating. Not the show Cheaters, although if you watch it, it's a pretty scary show. Who is this? Who is this? That is my husband for three years. I like you no more. Get out of here. Stand that. Calm down. Cheaters. But what we're talking about today is financial cheating. How do you know if your spouse is actually financially cheating on you? Welcome to another episode of What Ted Says, where it's always time to get a fatter wallet and a bigger net worth. And your wallet might not be as fat if your spouse is financially cheating on you. So make sure, if this is the first time you're watching these videos or you've watched a couple, click the subscribe button now. Get all of this great information. Make sure that you tell me. Maybe you're willing to share a story even anonymously in the messages about something that's happened to you or a spouse that financially cheated on you and probably an ex-spouse by now. Uh, of course, always click the notifications button. This is a great way to get all of the great information on the channel. So this is difficult and not easy because sometimes we catch our spouses and sometimes we don't. But like all relationships, the best thing to do is be transparent and to be honest. So here are five red flags for you to look out for if your spouse is financially cheating on you and then I'm gonna teach you the symptoms and how to potentially solve this problem. Doesn't work all the time, but it works a lot of times as I personally counseled and I say I'm part financial therapist. I've given therapy over the last 25 years to help many, many couples repair this very situation. One of the first things that you should be looking for is the mail. Now it can be difficult because maybe you don't get home every night and you don't check the mail and your spouse gets home before you. But even though a lot of the stuff that comes in the mail, like bills and catalogs and junk mail doesn't mean much, what you wanna be looking out for is a credit card that you're not actually on. Remember, anytime, anywhere, any place, your spouse or partner can open a credit card without you. And you could have been married for 15 or 20 years, and then they go open a brand new Visa card. Or what happens more often than not is they open a store card. Maybe it's at a Saks, or maybe it's at a Neiman Marcus, and they start spending money and you won't know that. And if they don't pay it, yes, you won't necessarily be on that from a credit score perspective, but it may be tens or hundreds of dollars every month or thousands of dollars every month that's actually coming out of your household that you don't know about because you don't see the card. The other thing that can happen here is a second red flag is you're removed from a card that you used to be a second card holder. And this could be a sign that your spouse is actually thinking about divorcing you. Because if you get separated, one of the things that you're gonna to have to track is if that spouse continues to spend money on that credit card, even after they said that they're gonna file for divorce, you still have joint money, and sometimes it can be difficult to prove all of that in a court of law. Well, the third thing in here is that cash, cash money has gone missing. Is there really a reason that you have to go to an ATM machine a lot today? And if you find that your spouse is constantly having to make lots of ATM withdrawals, it should absolutely set up a red flag to you that there is a problem. Now, I don't know if there's a drug problem. I don't know if there's a gambling problem and dare I say a sexual problem, but it happens, right? And when cash is coming out the door today, as you know, with online payment systems like PayPal, Square, Venmo, everything you can do with debit card and credit card. And the fact that a lot of establishments don't even want cash anymore. You have to kind of wonder like, for what reason would your spouse or partner have to take out a lot of cash? Usually it will fall into one of those addiction categories. The next thing that you might notice is that magically your spouse starts to have a lot of new possessions or they're having experiences that you're not having at all. Like you see them having new clothes all the time. And it's one of those things that sometimes you wonder to yourself, does your spouse or partner feel like it's their birthday every day and a package has to show up on the door? But it's not a package from Amazon with some candy bars or just with some basic household items. Here we're talking about expensive new shoes or clothes from high-end retailers, or you're seeing multiple new watches or new types of jewelry or necklaces. These kinds of purchases should tell you like, look, we can't afford this as a family. How is my spouse or partner actually affording this? Maybe they've got a side hustle and they're making extra money or they got a bonus that they didn't tell you about. Or what may be happening is they're just piling up the credit card debt, like I said, on a credit card that you simply can't see. But keep an eye out for experiences or possessions that you simply don't understand how they're getting the money to afford it. And then the last thing I would watch out for for a red flag is that you feel like in every conversation when you talk about doing something with money, 
your spouse seems to put up the stop in the name of love sign and they tell you it's either something we can't do or they're really worried about what's going to be happening with the finances or it almost feels like they're telling you that a bunch of bricks are just going to fall down on your shoulders if you hear that conversation over and over again and you know as a family that you're not in a ton of debt or there isn't a looming problem then maybe you have to ask yourself do they have a gambling problem do we owe money somewhere or did my spouse or partner make an investment in another company or give money to an individual that they thought they were going to get back and now they're not and now that money is gone permanently from our family that's a red flag you need to watch out for is number five ted all right i have one of these problems that's happening at my house right now how can i solve this problem one of the first things that you should do is ask for financial transparency and that's an important thing because it gets down to honesty. Like, it's not a bad thing that you might have some separate accounts, and you're gonna want that sometimes for financial independence. Not everything needs to be joint, but at the same token, it should be known and it should be transparent. So you may wanna ask your spouse or partner and saying, hey, can we do a yearly review of our finances and just list out everything that we have, all of the assets that we own and all of the liabilities that we owe. Even with that exercise, even if they are being honest, sometimes one or two things may pop up that you didn't even realize that you had. There are a lot of good data aggregation systems that are out there through companies like Mint or Yodly that can do this for you. But you certainly don't wanna accuse you will never get anywhere by saying, I know that you're gambling, or I know that you're cheating on me, or I know that you're spending money on fancy possessions and we don't have that money. That is not gonna get you anywhere. One of the biggest Stephen Covey principles is to seek to understand before you're understood. So you may ask something like, hey, I've noticed that you've gotten those beautiful Jimmy Choo shoes once a week for the last four weeks. They look amazing but I just wanted to learn a little bit more about how we had the extra money because obviously I don't see everything that comes in our finances. How do we have the extra money to afford it? That's a less accusatorial way about going about bringing up the problem and trying to create some sort of solution for it. The third thing that you can do if you wanna be a little bit sleuthy is to actually read your tax return. Now, people lie sometimes, we know that, but the tax returns don't lie. People will lie on their tax returns but the tax returns themselves don't lie. What you wanna look for on your tax return is go to Schedule B. Schedule B is called interest and dividends. And if there are bank accounts or there are stock accounts or other things that are interest or dividend bearing, they will actually show up on the tax return. You will also wanna look at Schedule D. That's capital gains and losses. And so if you wanna see if there was an asset that was sold and it lost money or it made money, that's where that information needs to be provided to the IRS. Now, you may wanna find a qualified financial advisor or accountant if you don't know how to read it, but this will give you a good opportunity to get transparency over where most everything is in terms of your assets. And then the last thing is that you might wanna set some common financial goals. If you can get there, one of the easiest ways to get on the page financially is to treat your family finances like a business and say, well, what are our short-term financial goals? We wanna pay off our car, we wanna build up an emergency cash reserve, we wanna do a renovation to the kitchen, and there may be some long-term financial goals like saving for your kid's college education or retirement. But you've gotta get on the same page because that will give you a much higher degree of transparency about where your money is gonna go. I will tell you this, 25 years of doing this, at some point in time in your relationship, you're going to suspect something funky is going on with your financial situation and you're gonna ask that question, is my spouse or partner financially cheating on me? Use these red flags, use these solutions and you will be much better off and on your way to get a fatter wallet and on your way to get a bigger net worth. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, make sure that you click the button subscribe. Make sure that you forward this to a friend or a family member that you think maybe there might be some cheating or you heard something like that and let them watch this episode. And as always, leave me your comments. I really appreciate it. We get back to you as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching this episode of What Ted Says.